All right. Well, hello, hello, and welcome everyone to our BG5 Live. This is November 3rd, 2020. This is episode number 77, and we have the big election going on here in the United States, and we are in trait number 44 in quality five, and uh, so we decided we'd put on an election day special. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, uh, how ways that, you know, things to look at um, as far as what the election day is going to look like. Also things uh, to look at if you're looking, <clears throat> looking at hiring someone or uh, electing a president. So uh, the theme today is about staying alert. All right. So before we get started, let's jump in and say hello to our panel. So let's start with Natalie. Hey, Natalie, welcome. Yes, yeah, so I'm the only non-American here. I'm just chilling out. No, <laughs> no, I, I, it's it's a special day. Yes, and I think this is this is one of the elections that the whole wide world is watching. So uh, I can say that it's been uh, around here as well. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I was uh, just speaking to uh, Sachiko from Japan and they're covering it there. I was talking to another friend who's in Ireland today. So uh, I think you're, yes. you're spot on, Natalie. Yeah. Well, great. Thank you for being here. And let's go to Chris. Hey, Chris, welcome. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah, I definitely have some clients from around the world who are also watching alongside all of us here. So here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Hold on to your butts. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Chris, and thanks for being here. And Rob. Hey, everybody. Fasten your seatbelt. Make sure that your tray table is in the upright and locked position. <laughs> this plane's taking off. Yeah, exactly. I love it. Well, thank you so much to our panel. My name is Karen, and let's jump in to taking a look at our BG5 Live for today. So thank you, everyone who is joining us live via Facebook. Thank you for everyone who is joining us live uh, in our Zoom room. And if you have any questions or any comments, uh, please feel free to type them below. Also, all of you who are watching via the recording as well. So we are now in November. So we have... Um, we're starting to begin this journey of transformation and change. So this last trait here in the 44 is the last trait that we were taking a look at in, uh, in bonding, in uh, correct, uh, creating connections with others. Um, and so we're going to finish up the last one here, the 44. This is also part of the four ways. So in a sense, we're, we're changing over and moving away from the, the bonding and connecting, and we're moving into transformation and change. So today, we're going to start with alertness in the 44, this uh, instinct for what is beneficial for a group. And again, November, we have this theme of transformation, also individual power as well. I found it really interesting as we take a look at November, how many of these traits are individual traits. So for example, the first one here, creative self-expression in the one. This is creativity rooted in unique direction. This is what's going to start us off in taking a look at transformation. This month, we're also going to take a look at breakthrough in the 43, taking a look at insight, really taking a look at listening to your own inner voice. Uh, once again, this is an individual trait. And then we're going to take a look at power skills in the 14. This is the fuel to empower. So this, again, is what we're going to be taking a look at over the course of this month. Uh, once again, it is an individual uh, trait, as well as personal power. And we can see the personal power in trait 34. This is a pure unconditional power. Uh, this is our personal power. And then uh, to wrap up November, we'll uh, focus on focus, all right? So the, the energy for the details. But you can see much of November has this theme of transformation and this individual power. So it'll be interesting to see um, how things show up over the course of this month. So I wanted to pause here. I don't know if there's anything uh, for, for Natalie or Chris or Rob that you want to add uh, before we continue moving forward. One of the things that I did notice uh, in 
in the uh, the chat room within Zoom is so Debbie Rosenfeld is is uh, watching today, and she says that she's feeling this in her body. Mm, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I, I can't wait for it all the, the transformation and change. Let's you know just change the world <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and, and get back to peace, and you know, and yeah, yeah. Just, uh, so change and transformation is is happening. That's yeah, very interesting. So I thought what I would do is uh, kind of take a look, and we, we're and we'll we'll discuss this. Kind of take a look at what this day looks like. So sort of from the beginning of the, today, when the polls open today, uh, to when the polls close. So just a, a couple of things in taking a look at, for example, the past and the future direction, right? Remember when we take a look at the past and the future direction, it really in a sense is, is the background, is the environment. Um, I thought it was interesting with the 64, uh, with, I'm sorry, with the 26 in quality four, there we go, and the 26 in quality four, the past direction is about censorship and the use of censorship to maintain the status quo. Uh, so, you know, there's been a lot um, in the news or not in the news, because um, there's there's been some um, censor censorship happening um, uh, in the world. So that's uh, kind of interesting that that happens to be there. And then if we take a look at the future direction, the 40, 45 in quality four, it's about gathering together. This is direction. And it's the expression of higher principles in the physical world, the ability to focus the opportunity of gathering together for the service of higher principles or not, right? So, so hopefully through this election as well, you know, we're gathering together in service of these higher principles. So I just thought it was interesting that that happens to be, you know, what the background is currently. Um, if we take a look at communication, kind of the communication of today, um, we, I put the first uh, polls open on the East Coast at 6 a.m. and then the last, the last polls close in Hawaii at 7 p.m. So I just took a look at kind of what are the things that sort of shift and change between the start um, and the end. So when the polls open and when the polls close. Now the, community, the communication stays the same. Um, it's about continuity. This is tranquility, the instinctive awareness to accept change and transition or not. All right, so, so I, you know, I, I feel this sort of interesting calm. I thought it would be a little bit more chaotic. It may be because I'm not out there, I'm, I'm at home. So um, I just thought that was kind of interesting as far as communication goes. One of the things that does change, um, which is interesting, is, of course, uh, the cycle of the driving force. It often changes a, a couple times a day. So we started off with uh, progress, this creative block, and where it ends up when the polls close is gathering together and this leadership. So again, we have this theme of gathering together, both in the future direction, but we can also see that it's going to be part of the driving force as well um, as we uh, wrap up the polls. Uh, also with judge and discipline, uh, one of the things that you, we can see that it actually changes and it changes into a different trait. Uh, so the start of the polls, it's inner truth, it's about appeal. And uh, the judge and discipline at the end is really about acceptance and ultimately about acceptance as well. So just a, a couple of interesting observations uh, in kind of taking a look at sort of what's happening today, what's, what's shifting between the opening of the polls and the closing of the polls. So I'd love to hear from, from Natalie or Rob or Chris, um, anything that jumps out or anything anything that you see or anything that you want to share or, or illustrate and kind of taking a look at, you know, the process of this day. One of the things that I've noticed over the last <clears throat> several months in my Facebook feed, especially, is a lot of divisiveness. I mean, we've seen this, so many of us have seen this, and it doesn't matter what side you're on. There's the there's, and especially in the U.S., right, and, and around the world, but around focusing world. on the U.S., and, um, you know, each one sort of like, this is, this is, there's a very, there's been a, um, and again, I'm just standing back, I'm not, I'm just taking a neutral stance here, observing, um, 
a lot of divisiveness on both sides and a lot of the pointing fingers and a lot of um, just um, like, I don't want to put this, like, you're just wrong. Like, you're just wrong. You don't see it and you're wrong. Like both sides doing this. Over the last, I don't know, 48 hours, I have seen people on both sides who are, who just weeks ago were like, you don't get it, you don't know, posting like no matter what happens. And, and I even put something on the seat, like no matter what happens, we're all in this together. Like, it's not like, okay, you vote somebody off the island and they're off the island. We're all still on the same damn island. So it's like what I'm noticing in this, as we're moving towards this gathering together, this acceptance that I'm, I've already been seeing it a little bit. People who literally just a couple of weeks ago were so in that righteous place are now saying, well, you know, again, let's all be together and, and we're all here in humanity. And there's a part of me that's like, oh, how nice and convenient now to be saying that, but also at the same time, like, great. That's great. That's where we're heading. That's what we want, regardless, regardless of where you are and how you're voting. And someone else says, Lisa says, yes, I've seen the shift as well. And I feel very at peace today. In fact, I also like, there's a kind of a peace that is settling in that is really unexpected because I, I just watching over the last couple months you to think and who knows what's going to happen but there does seem to be this sense of like maybe surrendering to the fates if you will and mm. sort of like okay we've done everything we could we in yeah. some ways we we're now it's up it we're just going to see what happens and I don't know if that's true or not but so yeah that's what that's my observation <laughs> Yeah, it's very, very interesting. How how about for you, Rob? Yeah. So I'm I'm looking at uh, this the relationship on um, the judge and discipline, mm. where we began the day at 61 with the quality six, and then we're finishing, or you know, if the last poll were at uh, 60 with the first quality, and I've just noticed that you know both of them are in pressure functions mm, mm. opposing right one at the top one at the bottom so this is kind of interesting we began the day with the pressure to think right mm. or at least you know some energy coming out of that function and then down at the bottom pressure to survive if you will yeah yeah interesting it's fascinating and chris you know um i'm, I'm yeah i've i've observed it's just gotten a little quieter I guess mm. is one way to put it and I agree with you like at the end of the day you know everyone's got their preferences and it's okay and I, I was actually hoping that all these people that are on there that are you know not just pointing fingers they're swinging swords like they're getting nasty right it's kind of nasty like completely you know anyway um I was just kind of hoping they were getting tired maybe they're tired out right like maybe you've said everything you said and now it's time for you to inhale a little bit so um yeah but yeah there's this there is this calm and i think we're all just kind of waiting to see what will transpire yep exactly any anything for you natalie especially not being here in the united states and what you observe yeah I'm not really out there a lot either, <laughs> living in my bubble here. Um, but it's fascinating that everybody ha has a, has something to say about it, mm. you know, like uh, either this or that. But everybody is busy with it, and and and. Um, yeah, and, and this divisiveness, we also see that here in, in uh, and, and then I'm looking more at, you know, the, 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 the handling of, uh, of, the, of the pandemic, 
and 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 Europe is you know all over the place going into lockdowns again, mm. which is uh, yeah. I don't know. It's it's and and but also this piece I also have and and I see that Debbie has a a, a different opinion. You know, she is uh, has this uh, energy internally feels electrified, and I'm constantly reminding myself to ground just to be with it, which is the best thing you can do because you in and of yourself cannot determine or control any of the outcome. So you know, just let it flow through and and. And be with it and observe. I think that that is the main thing to do anyway <laughs> from now up until 2027. So uh, just, <laughs> just observe. <laughs> and 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 it is fascinating to watch, but also at times difficult not to get caught up in 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 either sides or in in the pumped up uh, energy of the pressure or or in the fear and anxiety that comes from it. So yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's, but, but, but what I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy that we have the future direction of gathering together and coming to unite and, and, mm. and, you know, looking into more of the, the higher principles and not too much black or white or this or that or left or right right but more you know we, we are living we are in it together here and um i truly hope this <laughs> that that also in europe we will calm down so yeah. yeah that's just what i hope that 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 you know the whatever will come out that it will tranquilize the world a little bit we're yeah. so pumped up right now yeah exactly but natalie what you were just talking about, I found to be very, very cool. So obviously each one of us needs to take stock in our own, you know, career design, especially as it pertains to the shadows and distractions and that ability to amplify or electrify. And if we look at these charts down below, we see that the emotional intelligence is undefined. And so what you were, when you were talking about just being cool, don't get caught up in the emotions. Boom. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, and, and I, and I thought this was, you know, just talking about the election in, in many respects, it's, you know, who we're hiring, if you will, as the next president and how we hire is by our votes. And so I put in a slide here of just kind of suggestions of voting by design. And this is not only voting, but this is also, um, you know, taking a look at candidates, right? If you're, if you're hiring and you're trying to figure out who's going to be the best candidate for that particular job, right? So do your best, especially, you know, in the political arena uh, to ignore the rhetoric and propaganda about each candidate and look strictly at their career design. Because you, in a sense, you'll really see what you're getting right? Because it can be, there can be negative things on both sides. It could be really hard to, to figure out, you know, what is a lie? What is the truth, right? We've been in censorship. We're in this era of illusion and delusion. How do we know what is correct and what is not? Who's, who's saying, you know, who's, who's telling the truth and who's lying? It's really hard to know, right? Or, you know, what is a truth and what is a lie? It's, it's, it's difficult to discern. So do your best to ignore the rhetoric and propaganda about each candidate and look strictly at their career design. Um, what I've done in the past is remove the names and take the elements of their design and compare them side by side. So if I didn't know, you know who they are and kind of erase all of the, the rhetoric that's behind them, if I strictly look just at these elements, can, you know, really taking a look at comparing apples to apples, oranges to oranges, you know, who, you know, who exactly um, fits whatever that role happens to be. Um, and then taking a look at who is the best leader based on what the needs of the country are or based on the group or the organization or the business, et cetera. And then ultimately following your decision-making strategy because ultimately the only person that you can really trust is you. And you don't want to get in your head. This is about making an informed decision. So you, in a sense, know what you, what you get uh, with each candidate. But then at the same time, you know, ultimately it comes down to trusting yourself, trusting your decision-making strategy and what is correct for you. 
So I just put a quick just sort of side by side um, with candidate one and candidate two, just to kind of take a just a, a, an example of how you can look at it side by side. And here I just put just a very, very simple example, just so that we can see, again, from the design, we have uh, candidate one who is an influencer and a leader and is a classic builder, right? Candidate two, we have an authority and a pioneer who is an express builder. Right, so we can think of all of the elements of what a classic builder is versus an express builder, what an influencer and a leader is, right, as opposed to an authority and a pioneer, right, and, and really compare those two side by side and take a look at, okay, what, what is really going to be best in leading the country. Um, I took a look at their life work theme. Um, so candidate one has a life work theme of sharing contagion uh, with a personal focus for transformation. Right, candidate two has the life worth theme of sharing and support uh, of experience, you know, with the personal focus on form. So you can see taking the different elements of someone's design in the BG5 terminology, um, you know, taking a look at their general thematics, right, sharing versus sharing and support, um, and then also taking a look at their life work theme, contagion versus experience. And again, both of them have a personal focus. One of them has uh, the focus on transformation, one of them has the focus on form. Again, comparing them side by side, again, stepping back and just kind of taking a look at, you know, each of those two elements. Then I took a look at what their core essence is. And again, you can go through and take a look at many more aspects, but I just took a look at these, you know, core pieces. So candidate one has the core essence of power skills. This is security, the concentration on establishing a solid foundation. Uh, the key to power lies in developing skills to ensure a strong foundation. This is protection from assault, right? So that's candidate one. Candidate two has caution as their core essence, the monk, the withdrawal that can only be maintained, uh, the, the monk or withdrawal that can only be maintained with communal support. The expression of social withdrawal and value when, uh, and and its value when supported by others, the beauty and harmony possible beyond the reach of temptation. All right, so just kind of getting an essence of what each candidate has as their core essence. And then taking a look at what their strengths are. Again, what is defined? So candidate one has the strength of discovery and the strength of the experiential process. Candidate two has the strength of management, of organization, of interaction, and of the experiencer. So again, just taking a look at them, comparing them side by side, and if we're taking a look at what the position is, in this case, it's the President of the United States, you know, which of these skills, which of these strengths, which of this core essence, again, this is just the real, real basics, just to give you a, an illustration, comparing them side by side, which of them stands out, you know, which, uh, which of these things do you think is going to be best in leading the country? So it's just kind of an interesting way to be able to remove all of the rhetoric and take a look at comparing things side by side so you get, can get a, really se a real sense of you know, how each, each uh, candidate would lead. So Chris or Natalie or Rob, is there anything that you would like to add or anything that you see or anything that, uh, that comes to mind and kind of taking a look at things in this way? Yeah, I love, I love being able to, one of the things that I love about BG5 and I love about um, working with design, whether that's in business or politics or even in families and that is the ability to, without taking into consideration the factors that we tend to judge people based on their sex, their uh, skin color, their religious backgrounds, their whatever, their age, all of those things, if we just look at the look at the uh, the information here and we take this objective view, it can be really beautiful. We can do analyses of an entire team, for instance, without meeting anybody on that team and being able to see how they're all going to interact with one another, where are the sticking points and all of that. So that that is amazing, and I love that. And there's also another piece here that I think is really important because I've definitely had clients and I'm sure each of you have as well, where the client comes in and you can see the potential of the design. However, 
they may or may not be living in alignment with that. They can be in shadow. They can be operating in an unhealthy way. So they may have these strengths or these things, but if they're not operating in a healthy way, it then it's like, hmm, you know? And I mean, again, some of the work that I do is like, look at, this is where you're operating in a healthy way and stuff's flowing and clicking and people are following you. And here's where it's being expressed in shadow and an unhealthy way. And so that's the other piece. And that's the, that's a little bit of something that I think is also important that we have mm -hmm. to look at as we're looking at it objectively, then it's sort of like, how does it feel when you see, once you find out who, who's who, you know, and you kind of be with that person or you're in their energy field, it's sort of like, how does it feel? And that's where we use our decision-making strategy and our own intuitive sense and our own awareness of energy to really um, take this even off the, off the total objective and into the practical real life uh, energy field. Yeah, beautifully said, Chris. And Rob, you do a lot of, you know, recruiting as well, you know, uh, do you see ways that this, you know, can also be used, you know, again, you know, not only in voting, but also in, in hiring as well? Absolutely. I mean, we could have our own separate class just on this. Um, you know, I, I think that there's a lot of flaws in how we've been hiring people for years. I think that the resume is an awful tool. Um, mm -hmm. I know that goes against the grain. Everyone's looking at me right now, like, what is this guy on? But <laughs> A resume is a person's opinion of what they've done, right? If a resume is so great, why do we check references? Why do we have interviews, right? So I like the idea of having something like this so that you can see beyond the resume. Uh, and, and so by the way, just really quickly, most resumes have something dishonest on there. And then don't even get me started with interviews. Most people lie in an interview. So we need something to be able to look at a candidate objectively for what they are and and bg5 provides that right and yeah i mean th this way because a hiring manager they sell these things up the references the interviews the resume review all of that is set up to hopefully mitigate the risk right all they want is the right person but it's hard to it's hard to get to that point with the current process so having something like this without being too verbose would be absolutely transformational in, in the hiring process. Yeah, exactly. And Lisa is saying, this is amazing, Rob. I totally agree and have started hiring new employees this way and doing employee reviews. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, and I, I think we might've talked about this in a, in a past PG5 Live. So my accountant called me and she was like, hey, I need to bring on somebody. And I had given her an analysis and she loved it and she was blown away. So of course she came back and she was like, if I get this guy's, you know, birth information, can you, you know, give me a download? And I gave, I, I literally gave her something similar to what you put up here with the candidates and the guy's <laughs> rocking and rolling. She made the, the correct decision on the first shot. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I've done the same thing with, uh, with clients and teams, like having a client and their team members, like here are the candidates. And it's like, without taking all the other things out and just looking at the design. It's true. It's really, really remarkable. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. So whether it be voting, whether it be um, hiring a new employee, really kind of taking a look at very objectively, you know, what are you going to get? And this is a way that you can really see, you know, and, and, you know, Chris brings up a good point as well, right? There's also, you know, the, the opposite side too, that they may not be operating correctly, but at least you get a, a feel of what the potential is. Really beautifully stated. So let's dive in and take a look at what this trait 44 that we're experiencing today is all about. So when we take a look at trait 44, it is about alertness, the instinctive memory and alertness that can manage and mold the collective. So when we take a look at it, your instincts are always alert for any spontaneous interaction and the patterns around you uh, that, can move, uh, that can move a, pot a potential to the level of possibility. 
right? So taking a look at this alertness to know, you know, what, what is just possible and what is uh, potentially probable as well. Um, and what you remember or transmit shapes the material orientation of a group to overcome the fears of the past. So part of trait 44, all of the survival uh, fears, if you will, have a, or all of the survival traits have a particular fear associated with them. With the 44, it is the fear of the past. And you understand how propaganda works and can help a business overcome its fears in a way that ensures material success. Now, remember, this is a um, this is a tribal uh, a tribal trait um, that's connected to the tribal strength of the the transmitter. So it is this alertness to um, to you know overcoming fears of the past. It is this alertness also to sales marketing. Um, you know, uh, uh, being able to. Mm, help a business overcome those fears as well uh, through what people share, right? So it's kind of like this alertness to be able to navigate, right? Here's the past. Everybody knew how things were working in the past, right? It's kind of like what we're in the process of going through, as Natalie said, as we move towards 2027, 20, all the thing, all of a sudden it looks like things are kind of in chaos and there's not really any kind of pattern right? The leader who can see the pattern and be able to move us forward into the future, right? And ensure that material security, um, even though, you know, things are shifting and things are changing. So Natalie, Chris, or Rob, anything that you would like to add to what you see as far as alertness go in this, alertness goes in this trait 44? Well, it's an it's an interesting trade and an interesting uh, strength as well. And and it took me a while to to get this because propaganda sounds very icky, right? Mm. It's not what we like. But um, uh, when it's used properly, when it's used in a healthy way, uh, you are able to um, to sense um, what will be to the benefit of a group. Right. So and in that sense, you leave out maybe other things and, and just, um, you know, so that's the propaganda. Just use what 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 the group needs to survive. And that's what you know. So you have a sense for that. So you can also sense on the other side, the 26 uh, from willpower may, um, you know, not that's just the selling part, right? And uh, <laughs> and not really tuning into the instinctive side of it. And um, so it took me a while to understand that this is uh, so. It's 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 tribal. It's connected to smell. So you can smell if something is fishy or if something is um, if something fits. So if if whatever pattern or whatever um ideology or whatever fits to this group will help them you know will secure the future will will help them overcome the fears of the past and and so that they can move on right and and so that they can um yeah now yeah, transmit the shape of the materialization of the group but 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 you know have something to trust uh, so to say exactly. so it's um yeah, it's it's interesting that it is actually today this trade. So uh, maybe you go to the voting box with your smell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, interesting. Very cool. What do you see, Chris? Well, just kind of piggybacking on what you're saying, Natalie, about so 44's point is the instinctual half of the uh, the strength of the 4426 that goes towards willpower. So the 26 and willpower, the salesman there, and so it's um, and and because it's a fear, it's it, or it's in, coming out of the awareness, instinctual awareness function there. Um, that there's the fear there. And so I think that one of the things, again, I was kind of bringing the devil's advocate, if you will, a little bit, I feel like sometimes, but that is the, that this can be the truth. Just because something sounds logically correct, doesn't mean it's the truth. And just because 
you belong to a certain tribe doesn't mean that's the truth. Like it's really, we're very much being called into our own individual awareness. That's what we're moving towards. What's mm -hmm. dissolving is the like, if you're with us, you believe this and the propaganda being used that way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, propaganda is nothing more than marketing. You know, you mm -hmm. could think of it that way, right? So either you're marketing in a way that empowers people and it's for the betterment of the entire tribe or you're marketing for your own benefit. And again, that's the piece of the, of the, the tribal and the willpower on the other side, that 26. And so, again, I feel like we're, what's, what's happening is that we're all being called to really be in touch with that 61, the inner truth, uh, to what, what does it really smell like for us as an individual? What do you, yeah. what do you smell? Not what everybody wants you to smell. Like, that, right? You can always spray some perfume on that crap. Like, I love what you did once, Karen. You're like, you can put whipped cream on shit. It's still shit. Like, you can, you can. So there's, there's, I think there's that piece of it that we're really being called into. And it's just really understanding. That's why I love like OC16 and, and some of our advanced certifications here at BG5, because we really start to understand not just how this works as an individual, but how this really does work in the collective um so anyway that's just something i'm also aware of today yep, yeah exactly and if we take a look at what today is right we we have the 44 is actually connected to that 26. yeah, yeah. right so yeah yeah and 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 the realize which is a great point that i want to pick out of what you said it is tribal so it's it's really for the betterment of the tribe and not for for the betterment of the individual right mm. so yeah yes anyway rob drop the mic <laughs> <laughs> let, let me pick up the mics that y'all have been dropping <laughs> so you know again i just look at the timing of where we're at right now you know and the fact that and, and again, I look at business. So like, let's just look at this last bullet point. Okay. If you're American Airlines, this is important. Mm. They're freaked out right now. They've laid off 19,000 people approximately could be more. They don't, they, they, you know, there's all these reports about it's going to take at least six years just to get back to like standard business for them. Mm -hmm. Six years. That's a long time, but you know, so if I'm a leader and I, I keep bringing up the leaders cause that's just, you know, that's who I work with. Um, I think that this awareness, this survival instinct and, and the fact that it's being called out right now in all of this is like so important. And, you know, if I'm a leader, I'm like, good gracious, how great is it to have, to be able to be fed this and to have this um, support? if you will, yeah. to, you know, notice the patterns and then, you know, being aware of that and then moving towards a successful possibility, a serve, you know, something that would help me as an, me as a leader survive my group, my division, my department, my company. Right. And then be able to rationalize and look at the, the, the things in the past that have happened and just say like, you know, this is what we're going to do. Like, what, what do you think the conversations look like at American Airlines right now in terms of under, you know, a leader, if it, let, let's say that they read this third bullet point and they're like, understanding how propaganda works and how I can help American Airlines overcome its fears in a way that ensures its material security. That's a big job. Yeah. Right. And a leader that can do that. Uh, is, is going to be that leader that we've all been like, we're ready for. Yeah. Right. Not that one that stands, that that ivory tower guy or gal, you know, the person that says you do this because I said you should, but more of that leader that understands that's there with the group that really appreciates and knows the individual and respects them and honors them and sees them and allows them to, to, to be themselves. Mm. Mm. Yeah, really beautifully said, Rob. You know, and, and if we take a look at this image too, it's, you know, 
it's that leader that's willing to kind of step out, see how the patterns work and where everyone is stuck and stopped and, you know, don't even know how to move forward to be able to say, okay, it's okay. We can make it right. And, and lead them through the, the confusing and, and, you know, the confusing and crazy times, right? Exactly. And if we, if we take a look at the quality that's there, um, it's quality five of manipulation. So it's interesting. We have censorship, censorship we have propaganda, we have um, manipulation, right? All these things can be both used in a very negative way. There's also a positive way that you can use them as well. So if we take a look at the elevation, the possibility that alertness to patterns will result in the management capability, right? Just like what Rob was talking about. Um, the development and the management of the proper, proper collective structure, which restricts inferior elements and co creates cooperative modes that integrate those forces with a pro uh, progressive and superior, superior forces, right? So it's kind of like the, the leader has climbed to the, to the top of this cliff and is cheering them on like, yes, you can do it. I know it's tough. I know it's really difficult. I know it's really hard. You know, but, you know, I'm alert to the patterns and I know how to lead us through all of this confusion. I know how we can get here to the top and you can be safe and you, you, you know, you don't have to worry about falling, but we have to work together. Right. So in a sense, it's a, a, a manipulation in, um, you know, it may be something that's really, really dangerous, right? That the, the person who's in the leadership position can see like, oh my goodness, we could all perish. We could all die. That is a possibility. But at the same time, they're like, nope, that's a possibility, but not on my watch, right? Not today. And give everyone that cooperative model to really, you know, integrate uh, those, those forces and, and ignore the, the inferior forces that may get in the way or stand in the way. Now, of course, it can be, you know, the instinctive memory for patterns that bypass the development of managerial capacity, a tendency in management to concentrate exclusively on goals, ignoring inferior elements, which lead inevitably, inevitably to quantitative success and quantitative failure, kind of like what Chris was talking about, right? Is it and what Natalie was talking about, is it for the, the good of the tribe? Is it the good for the good of everyone? Or am I just focused on, you know, my goals and succeeding and, you know, kind of ignoring the inferior elements, which, you know, could lead to success or could lead to quantitative failure as well? Qualitative. Qualitative. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. So there's a big success, but in quality, it's actually a failure. Right, right. Yeah. Because, you know, yeah, these quality, yeah. forces are still messing with the, the result. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Well, it's like going ahead and getting there, but, you know, everybody's injured, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's like, so what? You checked it off the box. Like half the people, you know, nobody's like... Everybody who's there to enjoy it is now dead. <laughs> so <laughs> we got there, but everybody died. It's like, okay, um, yeah. <laughs> right. Which exactly. box are you checking? You right. Know. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Any, anything, anything, uh, Rob, that you would like to add? Um, yeah. So the goal fixation by leadership is is something that I, I really also, as we transition into. A, a more of a transformative um, time and, you know, bringing in that, that new era where, where leaders will stop being so fixated on goals. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, a goal isn't even, it, it's not even a live thing. Yeah. It's all right? made up. Yeah. But, but the, you know, and yeah, so it's, you know, the people are the true human capital. And uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. 
you know, so are we, are we working together? I mean, this is kind of an interesting thing to take a look at, you know, especially today, um, you know, are we working together by creating this cooperative model uh, that integrates these forces, you know, with the progressive and superior forces, right, to move us all forward together, as we were talking about earlier, right? Or is the focus just on the goal, no matter who it hurts or, you know, who it damages? So, yeah, so this challenge actually speaks to the problems of engagement in the workplace. Mm. Mm -hmm. Say a little bit more about that. Well, so when, when a manager is kind of bypassing everything and is fixated on this goal, right, uh, we must succeed at all costs, even if everyone is incapacitated or dead, <laughs> um, they begin, so then that thought or that fixation begins to drive a set of behaviors, which are typically not pro-survival. They wouldn't feed survival. It actually make, you know, it would restrict and damage the ability to survive as a group. Mm. And it drives people off. You were talking about the collaborative aspect of it. Everyone else just feels like a pawn in the game, which, you know, if you ask, if you did a survey right now, a lot of people at work just feel like they're kind of a pawn, mm. you know, they're just, they're getting a paycheck and blah, blah, blah. And we, we read about all these things and, um, and books by Gallup and other, other, you know, resources where across the world right now, only one and a half people is actually engaged at work. And this That's challenge sad. just kind of speaks to that, you know, like the old way of managing the old way of doing things, right. That goal fixation. It's going by the wayside. Yep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, and I find it fascinating, you know, we always have a, a celebrity, um, you know, that uh, that represents this trait. And we've been talking a lot about survival, right? This is the, the last trait that we're taking a look at um, in the survival instinct. And if we take a look at uh, who has this particular trait, I think it's so perfect. <laughs> That's hilarious. You were just talking about this earlier, Chris. <laughs> oh my God, that is so funny. My my kids and I have like watched it since the beginning. So I know, exactly. So Jeff Probst, who is the host of the TV show Survivor, he has the 44-5, right, as his core essence. So the life work theme is incarnation. You keep the past alive by revisiting it and connecting all of us to it, right? It's but part of what the survivor is all about, endlessly pondering what it means to incarnate and what is needed to survive. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> oh my God. You know, so it is that, that, that survival. Yeah, Natalie. Uh, well, I was just laughing, <laughs> even this heroes, healers and hustlers, like, you know, they've had all these seasons and then he keeps bringing some of the old players back to mm -hmm. replay the game either they're playing it again as a reunion-ish type thing or to analyze the game or whatever and it's just we've even watched it in other countries when we were in europe a couple some uh springtime ago and watching it in a different language and what's great about it is you they have their own you know that jeff probst isn't the one who's doing it but the basis of it like you can, even if we didn't understand the language, the kids and I are like, oh yeah, that person's getting voted out for sure. <laughs> like, <they're still laughs> gone. you know, and it was just all because the whole way it's set up and the behavior and the way people talk and it's just, you get to see the patterns, the mm -hmm. patterns that are laid out. And uh, we get to see that through the experience of you know, he invites us to watch patterns of survival and then we get to, that's why I love, love watching us. The psychological, you know, it's always like the real leaders, like the strong leader who isn't invited, um, mm -hmm. who just comes out the gate leading, they're gone, they're out. They're like the first one to go. Everybody's like, oh, they're gonna be annoying. They're out, they're <laughs> strong, they're, they're gone. Or if they're super weak, they're gone. Mm -hmm. And then everybody else in the middle who's a little bit quieter, you know, it's the fight to the finish at that but uh, anyway sorry i just i'm just totally geeking out on this <laughs> <laughs> but but isn't that fascinating right oh it's what you know it's what we've been you know talking about so ultimately in a sense this leadership is about the survival of the tribe yeah. right and you know this this is a uh, you know the even even in the selection 
right? What direction are we going as a country uh, in an, uh, you know, and as a nation, right? What is, you know, are we going to survive, you know, with all of the conflict that you were talking about earlier, Chris, you know, and all of these butting of heads and kind of two different realities and two different ways of, of seeing things, you know, are we able going to be able to come together and gather together, right? And it's going to take a strong leader um, to be able to um, be able to, to bring us all on the same page, right? And, and it's going to take a strong leader to remove the fears of the past because a lot of, you know, the fears of the past have surfaced as well, you know, as well as where are we going in, where are we moving forward into the future? Because it, you know, we don't know. Things have been very chaotic this year, right? So, you know, having a leader that can lead us through whatever the chaos is, especially as we move through these changing times, I think is going to be very important. Yeah, pretty amazing. Well, this has been an amazing, amazing discussion. Um, so thank you all so, so very much. And uh, I'm going to go through our, our little promos here. And if, uh, if there's anybody in um, the Zoom room or anyone on uh, Facebook Live, if there's any questions you have or anything that you want to share uh, that comes to life, we would love to hear from you as well. Uh, again, if you want to follow along with our, our BG5 Live, if you want to see if you have that particular trait in your own design, uh, you can uh, get a free chart. You can actually download your chart. So as you go through BG5 Live, you can see, do I have that trait? Do I not have that trait? Do I have that strength, etc.? cetera? Um, so it's either something that you have that's part of your nature, or it may be something that you are conditioned by or um, amplify or pick up from others. So it's really helpful to be able to see that. Um, also, you can take a look at what the traits are and the themes are for the day by taking a look at our uh, BG5. You can also get a free report uh, to find out a little bit about your career design. And we have new classes that are coming up. Um, we actually have Chris's uh, teaching a class in December. We also have classes starting in January. Uh, so check out the classes and, uh, and join us. So with that, to wrap everything up today, I would love to hear from, uh, first of all, if there are any questions or any comments, again, either from our, uh, from our uh, uh, BG5 Live Zoom room or anything from Facebook. I just wanna check in and see if there's anything there first. So Lisa Schofield says, amazing discussion today and she expresses her, her gratitude. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, it's been it's been really, really fun. Um, so I would love to hear from uh, from each of our panel, just um, just something just to to stay present, to be aware of, um, especially in the next uh, couple of days, um, how to be alert right in the next couple of days with the uh, with the 44 there. Uh, and again, um, after the 44, we move into the one we move into uh, individual self expression. Uh, so that will be interesting um, as we move forward. Um, so the next couple of days, again, it's still going to be this alertness before we have the ability to move into uh, this, er, this uh, transformation into this creative self-expression. So what, uh, what do you recommend? What should people pay attention to? How should they be alert um, over the next few days? Well, I want to just, first of all, second Rob's, uh, he said, you definitely put together one heck of a conversation today. And I want to second that, you know, thank you, Karen, for putting this together and putting together just a really beautiful way of seeing design more objectively and using design as a, you know, a discussion, whether you're, whether we're voting in a new president or leader or hiring, uh, you know, someone in a company or, uh, a team member or something like that, just the value of being able to be a really, really objective mm. um, is just huge. It's, it's, it's really incredible. So thank you for doing that. Very and nice. in such a beautiful way, I really appreciate that. And then as far as alertness goes, um, again, think about this as the fear of the past. So instead mm. of choosing based on what you don't want to happen anymore, Choose on, be alert to what you want to create, mm. because as we come into individual creativity in the next one, it's sort of like, be aware of the past and alert to it, but make your choices based on the world that you want to live in. 
Mm. not based in what you don't want. Yeah. If that makes sense. And so um, whether that's in your business, in your personal life, or as you're walking to the polls today or going into the, the voting uh, in your own country, wherever that is, whenever that day is for you, I, um, that's what I would say is so what kind of future do you want to create and, uh, and choose from there? Mm, love that, Chris. Love it. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. How about for you, Natalie? I actually like very much what Chris was saying. <laughs> mm. No, to, to focus more on where you want, where you want to go instead of what you don't want, because what you put out there is what you attract. And if it's enough this, you will still attract. So, mm. yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. And how about, yeah. Was there, yeah, was there more about alertness? Yeah. Exactly. And tune into your own decision-making strategy. How does it feel for you? How does it smell for you today? But you know, yeah. Yeah. yeah so that heightened sense of, of smell and that heightened sense of awareness. Um, yeah. as we go through the next couple of days. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Natalie. How about for you, Rob? Well, yeah. So I do, I do want to thank you again for, for being the pioneer that you are, uh, you know, creating <laughs> such a cool class, like how to vote using design. I mean, that's just really cool. I don't know that I would have ever even thought of something like this. So I'm really glad that you put this out there. Um, and then of course, you know, me being in the recruiting and staffing world, you know, the, the hiring aspect of that as well. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Um, this has been an amazing conversation. I really resonated what, with what Chris was talking about. And I, earlier in the conversation, you know, in terms of staying alert, we need to realize that we have awareness. Mm -hmm. We have it. It's a gift. It's, it's phenomenal. And so, you know, I guess the easiest way, this is going to sound so silly, but like the easiest way to be alert is to, to just be aware. Sometimes mm. it's not even a doing this. It's just be be aware and know that that survival instinct is there. Um, and then the other aspect I would say is as we, as we go through this, um, you know, there, the world is full of emotion, mm. right? Mm. And it's, um, I know this because um, for, for me, it's a shadow, the, you know, the open emotional intelligence. And so I have a reflexive tendency to amplify things. Mm. Um, and it typically doesn't work out very well. Um, it, it, yeah, it doesn't. So what I would say is, you know, follow what Natalie was talking about earlier about, you know, just don't get caught up in it. And, and, you know, because everyone's going to have their emotions. And by the way, you're not going to change them. You're not in the changing people business, right? Just be in the live your design business, right? Yeah. You do the colored parts of you. Yeah. Yeah. Beautifully said, Rob. I love that. <laughs> I love that. You do the colored parts of you. That is <laughs> That, that is awesome. Right there. <laughs> so good. Now that's some propaganda there, brother, that I can get behind. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I'm writing that down. It, it sounds kind of like elementary, but it's, it's just, I think it's the easiest way to orient somebody. Hey, you know, you see all those color things in your chart? Just do that. Be that. <laughs> I love it. That's what we need. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, beautiful. And, uh, and any, anything for you, Moxie? <laughs> Just come to visit me here. So yeah, amazing, amazing discussion. And again, you know, stay alert, stay aware, um, follow your decision-making strategy. Again, you know, it's a, a great way to, as we talked about, you know, being able to be very objective and not get caught up as Rob was saying, with, with all of the emotions and all of the fears and all of, the, all of the stuff that's going on, you know, and Melissa says, so great. Thank you all. I sincerely appreciate hearing all of your articulate, uh, all of you articulate your perspective. So thank you, Melissa, for being here. Thank you, each and every one of you uh, that uh, is here live in our Zoom room. Also, those of you who are here on Facebook. Uh, hopefully it's made a difference and you're able to see things and be alert in a different way. So thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Have a fabulous week and we'll see you all next week. Bye everyone. Thanks so much.